Joining us is uh, Peter Schiff. He's a Senate candidate in Connecticut, uh, running in the Republican primaries, and um, he's a libertarian and conservative, and I think we're going to have a very interesting conversation. Uh, Peter, welcome to the Young Turks. Oh, thanks for having me on as a guest. All right. First, uh, who are you running against? Well, right now I'm in the Republican primary, and my principal challenger is Linda McMahon, who was endorsed in our convention. She is the wife of Vince McMahon, and together they own World Wrestling Entertainment. And they have, I guess, a combined net worth of close to a billion dollars, and she is committed to spending as much as $50 million of it on this race. And thus far, she's, I think, already spent about $17 million and change uh, at this point in, in the primary. Uh, so are you ready to deliver the People's Elbow Tour? She, <laughs> I'm going to do what I can. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it's interesting because, I mean, the WWE, I mean, I've enjoyed it in the past, but it's a clown organization, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, it's a, it's a publicly traded uh, company, and uh, they've made a lot of money, and they have a lot of fans. I have no idea, uh, you know, how they run the business, but obviously it's been successful for the McMahons, and a number of people enjoy it. I, I'm really not a wrestling fan myself. I, I've never really watched one of those, a wrestling match. Uh, but I know there are a lot of people that, that, that don't like it because of the gratuitous sex and violence and, and things of that nature. And so it's turned a lot of people off in the state of Connecticut. That's why Linda McMahon has very, very high unfavorables and high negatives. And I don't think she can win uh, uh, the general election. Uh, so I think if Republicans in Connecticut want to actually win in November, uh, they're much better off nominating me. And, of course, if I win, it means something. If Linda min wins, I don't think it means anything. Yeah, is she going to crush you with her money? Uh, is she going to way outspend you? And and, and well, what's I mean, the she already has. That? She already has way outspent me, and she bought the convention. She convinced uh, you know the Republican establishment to back her because she convinced them she could buy the election. Uh, but she hasn't convinced the voters of that. Uh, but hopefully, you know, I've got a real grassroots campaign here in Connecticut. I've got all the right. grassroots organizations, the Tea Parties behind me. So hopefully the people uh, can can overcome the, the party establishment. And despite her, her, her millions, that I can uh, still prevail and get this Republican nomination and go ahead and, and win in November. All right. Sounds good. So you're the underdog. I got that. So now let's get to the fun part. Uh, us disagree. Uh, now, you write in, in some of your work here that uh, you're against government intervention through regulation, stimulus programs, and corporate bailouts. I'm with you on one out of three. I, I can't stand the corporate bailouts, uh, and I think you're right on that. But can you see how regulation and corporate bailouts are not the same thing, even though the government is doing both? That it might not be logical to lump them together just because the government is doing both. Well, you have to remember, the reason that so many companies were broke and got bailed out was because government regulation created the problems. You know, it was government totally regulation wrong. in the form of guaranteed mortgages from Freddie and Fannie that made uh, banks uh, lend money to people who couldn't pay it back because the government said, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll pay it back for them. And, of course, it was the Federal Reserve that slashed interest rates down to 1% that made possible the teaser rate. They basically fueled the subprime market. So it was government interference, government, government regulation that undermined the free market economy, that took away the restraints that the market imposed on excess lending and excess speculation, and it created the problem. You know, uh, Peter, I actually said while you were speaking you were totally wrong. But that's not fair. You're actually only about two-thirds wrong. Uh, the third I agree with you on is the teaser rates and then the guaranteed mortgages, uh, and that's the government getting too involved, and, and then that encourages people to take more risk. So on that, I agree with you, right? But on other stuff, I, that's, what, what happened, Peter, was that we deregulated. And so what we said to the companies is, look, before we had limited your leverage, now we're not limiting your leverage, so you can take much greater risk. But, but we also, hold on, hold on, let me finish. We also took away Glass-Steagall that said, well, if you want to gamble, you can't gamble with people, the money that people put into your bank. Well, we took that away saying, yes, you can gamble with that money. So they took people's money, and they took enormous risks with it. And then on top of that, we deregulated derivatives, which are even more dangerous, and allowed that risk-taking to happen. Yeah, let me, here, let me, we're agreeing partially. Let me, one thing is, see, they took away part of Glass-Steagall, but not all of it. You see, if they were going to repeal it, they had to repeal it all. The problem was they left government-guaranteed bank accounts in check. 
That is the problem. Now, once the government guarantees bank accounts, I agree with you, we need to regulate what the banks do with that money because we remove the market regulation. You see, people put money into banks. They don't care what the banks do with the money. They don't care how much risk they take because the government guarantees the account. If they would have repealed that, if they would have took away deposit insurance, then the banks would have had to act a lot more responsibly because otherwise they would have lost their deposits. So the problem was we didn't deregulate enough. We left enough government regulation to screw everything up. I was against repealing the grass steagle the way they did it. But the other part is, see, I was warning about this stuff in advance. I wrote a book in 2006 called Crash Proof, How to Profit for the Coming Economic Collapse. I was on television for years warning of the debacle coming in the mortgage market, uh, that Franny and Fannie were going to go bankrupt, that the rating agent, the ratings on AAA debt was actually going to go to zero. I was talking about this huge collapse and that the way the government was going to try to solve the problems with stimulus and bailouts years before it happened. So I understood in real time the damage government regulation and subsidies was doing to our economy. And, and you know, the people who now blame the free market, these are the people that said, no, the economy was in great shape, that there was nothing wrong. All right, here's uh, two other reasons why I disagree with what you just said. Uh, first of all, uh, you're under the assumption that the free market would have worked even if we didn't guarantee the, the deposits because then the banks would have had an incentive to do the right thing. But you're misunderstanding one part of it. The banks, the owners of the banks don't run the banks. The executives run the banks, and the executives are not beholden to their shareholders. And we've set up that wrong structure. So they think, what difference does it make? I'll gamble with people's money. And if it crashes, who cares? The owners take the hit on it. I still have my yacht and, 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 and made yeah, You're right there. And that has to change because they are beholden to the shareholders. The problem is so many people own their shares through mutual funds. And, and the mutual fund owners, you know, it's not their money. They're all, they all care about a short-term performance. So I agree that, th that there is a bad structure. And, you know, hopefully if we would have had a bigger market shakeout. But, Peter, uh, Peter let me interrupt that. you there for a second. Because, see, we have the wrong structure. Wouldn't that be a, a perfect opportunity for the government to say, look, these are the rules that we have to play within so we have a fair structure? No, for example, no, no. hold on, hold on. Let for example. Market, let the market do that. Let, pe let the market restructure. Because if the government does it, they're going to do it wrong. No, they, no, they, no, they no. Don't that know makes these no guys sense. in Washington no. have no clue. No, no, Peter, that makes no sense. It's like we're playing a basketball game and you say, uh, well, let Charles Oakley figure out how badly he's going to foul Michael Jordan, and it'll all work out. No, you need refs. You need rules. And if you don't have rules and refs, the game's not going to work. It's not going to be fair. No, well, well we, have, we have laws for contracts, and we have laws against fraud and things like that, but we don't want to micromanage companies and try to say this is how uh, pay packages need to be structured. We have to let shareholders vote with their feet. If shareholders don't like uh, Let me the, get the way specific management then. is operating, then, then, then sell your shares. No. Then vote for different uh, directors. No, Sue the directors Peter, if so, you think that's... they made a mistake. Let's use the court system. But that can goes... have socialists in Washington micromanaging no, the economy. No, no, They're no, going to no, screw no. it it's up. It's not about micromanaging. Peter, that goes, that, let me get more specific with you, because that goes towards a perfect point. Now, there was a, a, a law introduced uh, by actually Maxine Waters initially to allow shareholders to have more control over who's on the boards and who the executives are, right? That's not micromanaging. That's setting up a rule that the government has to do to allow the owners to better control their companies. But now, you know, are you against you, that? But you have this option. See, nobody forces anyone to buy stock in a company. So if you want to buy stock in a company that has those type of uh, of but of, all the companies rules, then do it. If you don't like, nobody forces anyone. But it's to all buy the stock. companies, Peter. So you see, if you don't have any rules, all the companies all, uh, and their executives get to say, "Oh, d d owners be damned." No, then where are you going to go? You're not going to go anywhere. They don't get to do it. They can be fired. They can have the boards of directors who represent the shareholders. Look, you know, I think the market is going to work a lot better than That system is broken and you know it. Government. That you system know, is government broken and you know it. You even said it. And then, look, and then to come back to the second pro uh, problem that you set up in this perfect free market idea, which is, well, well okay, you know what, we shouldn't even gu guarantee the money you're putting into the banks. But, Peter, we tried that before, and we're talking to Peter Schiff. He's running for uh, Senate in Connecticut. He's a Republican candidate. We tried that before, Peter, and what did it get us? It got us the Great Depression. No, it didn't. You know, there's a lot of myths. Do you know how much money was lost to bank failures as a percentage of bank deposits during the entire years of the Great Depression? Go for it. Two percent. Two percent of the money on deposit was lost. You know how much we lose more than that every year to inflation that we didn't have back then because of all the money they have to print to try to prop up all these failed banks. We have a less 
solid banking system now than we did before the Depression. And there are other countries that don't have deposit insurance. Many countries don't, and they have sounder banking systems than we do. They have fewer bank failures than we do without bank insurance. We never needed it. We don't need it. And, you know, when they originally put the insurance in, it was only for a small amount of money. The idea was that larger depositors would make sure that they checked out the banks and they would, you know, they would make sure the banks were sound, but only the small guy needed the protection. But now we insure all the deposits. We don't let anybody lose money. And the whole idea that you, you can put your money in a bank and not worry about a thing, uh, that's a moral hazard because Peter. the banks are all competing on yield and they don't care how much risk they take. Uh, Peter, I, you know, two things you said there I don't think are factual at all. Now, you, you say the 2% was lost in the Great Depression, et cetera. So does that mean the Great Depression was a mirage, that it didn't no, no, no. happen? No, of course it, it happened. We had total and utter bank collapse. No, no, I'm talking about how much bank deposits were lost due to failures. There was a Great Depression, but people's bank deposits weren't wiped out uh, across the country. You know, but the reason we had a Great Depression Let me was guess. because who and Roosevelt interfered in the economy too no, much and that's created no it, historian just like agrees Bush with and Obama that. Are did, that, that are doing. No, Herbert Hoover, the Depression started under Herbert Hoover. It had nothing to do. It's like blaming this recession on Obama when it started under Bush. It's revisionist no, I'm, history and makes no I sense. It, you're right. It did start under Bush. Obama is making it worse. The Great Depression of the 1930s started under Hoover, and then Roosevelt made it worse. Yeah, but that's the reason totally we had revisionist history. And, and Peter, no, well, look, look, let me go to the second point, because you said all the other uh, countries don't actually uh, regulate and they don't have insurance for the banks. The soundest uh, banking uh, system right now in the world is Canada. And they've already gotten past their recession. They've, uh, they've gotten past the, uh, the jobs lost. They're growing at 6%. Why? They're the most heavily regulated banks in the world. Well, there are other countries there that they have a lot less regulation. Look, I have money invested up in Canada. I think Canada is a better place to be right now than the U.S., Thanks. but not because they have a lot of regulations, because they're not deeply in debt like we are. They're, 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 they don't have the fiscal problems, and they have a lot of natural resources, and they have a trade surplus. So they're no, in you, better but, shape, but wait, it's not Peter, because now they you have say more you're, regulation. You're, you're if say they you're, have less regulation, no, that's No, shape. come on, now you're being disingenuous. Peter, no, you, no, you say you're a financial expert. You don't know that the Canadian banks are heavily regulated no, and no. hence very I didn't sound? Say that they weren't heavily regulated. I said that's not why their country is in sounder shape. You have to look at a cause and effect. You know, they would be in even better no, shape. No, but their banks didn't a... crash. Their banks didn't no, crash at all. Why? Because they didn't take risks. the risk. New Zealand banking system. The New Zealand banking system has much fewer regulations, including no deposit insurance, which they abolished in the 1980s, and their banking system is extremely sound. Uh, okay, again, and, uh, that we'll, makes we'll no on, sense. You know, we'll let, on, me, on. Let, me, let me go back to leverage for a second and tie this stuff in. So you're saying that in financial reform, we shouldn't, and which we didn't anyway, that's why I think financial reform was a joke, that we shouldn't worry about leverage. You say, oh, you want to take 40 no, to 1 risk? Worry about we should it. take that's 100 to 1 should risk. That's subsidizing it. Look, the reason that banks are so levered up is because the Fed gives away the money. The government gives them the money. That has to stop. And well, I agree with that part. I said being. that from the beginning. I agree that we shouldn't give them the money in the first place. Uh, but we certainly shouldn't allow them to do any... It, it, look, it goes back to the same analogy. You, you don't want... I mean, you expect people to just oh, yeah, do the right thing without I, cops? I you agree expect with you. Ray Once Lewis we, not to take Manning's head off if there are no reps? Look, of course I the bankers are going to take Once, this risk with your money. No. Once, once we make the mistake of insuring bank accounts, we have to regulate what they do with the deposits because we took away the market regulation. So if we make the first mistake, then we have to correct it with the second mistake, but we'd be better off not making any. But look at the financial reform bill. They did nothing about Freddie and Fannie. Freddie and Fannie are the biggest problems of the mortgage market. You know, they're the ones that are out there with government guarantees and the FHA. We've done nothing about the FHA. Those are the real problems. That's why we had a housing bubble. All right, and the two federal things there. And Peter. interest rates are even lower now than when they inflated the housing bubble. We're doing even more damage with these ridiculously low interest rates. All right, two quick things there. You said if we're guaranteeing the money in the banks, which we are, and we have been for uh, about 70, 80 years now, right? So then you agree that we should have had tighter financial yes. reform. Oh, yes. Oh, and I regulation. I agree. Okay, oh, you yeah, do I agree. Okay, because, we, because the bank accounts were guaranteed and the government removed 
the free market regulation, then we need to substitute government regulation. Okay, My only so point then is you the agree government that the regulation isn't as effective. So then you agree that the Republicans were on the wrong side of that issue? Yes. Oh, yeah. I okay, criticized the Republicans in real time. I'm not criticizing him after the fact. I was a big critic of the Republican Congress, of George Bush, for the things that they were doing that I knew were leading to our financial collapse. That's why I wrote my book when Bush was president. I saw this disaster coming because the Republicans and the Democrats had it wrong, and they right. still have it wrong. All right, and that, that part is true, by the way. In 2007, Peter wrote the book uh, Crash Proof. Uh, and uh, he's running for Senate now, and his website is shiftforsenate.com. And my latest book, you, got, you, know, I wish you guys would probably get a big kick out of it, is How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes. Right. Now, Peter, I wanted to, just in the time that we have left, go back to the, the second part of what you mentioned there, Freddie and Fannie. Now, I agree with you, Freddie and Fannie are a disaster, and we should have fixed that, and instead we're going to spend untold billions of taxpayer money on that. But do you agree that Freddie and uh, Fannie were not the cause of the original problem? That the cause of the original problem was the bankers who got free money to gamble with and took enormous risks with taxpayer money. Well, the, the, the cause, the bigger cause, I think, was the, the Federal Reserve, which kept interest rates so low, which fueled the whole bubble. But it was Freddie and Fannie that guaranteed the mortgages that allowed the banks to act so recklessly. And, of course... Freddie and Fannie were the biggest buyers of subprime mortgages. They basically created a bid for that market. They made it possible for Wall Street to originate subprime because Fannie and Freddie were the biggest buyers keeping the market held up. So the government was the single biggest factor. I'm not saying that, 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 that the private no, sector no, no. wasn't complicit, but the thing is, without the government alcohol, you know, Wall Street never would have gotten drunk. And that's basically what happened. No, no, and, and you know, Bush talked about how they got drunk, and he talked about the Home Ownership Society, and he was so proud of that. But you criticized Bush for that. I did. But, I but, criticized but, that the whole and, time. And you, and you, I agree with you that they should not have subsidized in that way, and, and they're still doing it. And I agree that they shouldn't be doing it. But look, in the end, what wound up happening? It wasn't because Freddie and Fannie. It was because the banks thought this is free money, and so they dumped their bad mortgages in Freddie and Fannie, and then they took their of worst course, toxic assets would, would, and would dumped it at the them? Fed. Who, who would blame them? That's the whole. Once, if the government is going to buy your bad mortgages, you'd be an idiot not to sell. The problem was the government shouldn't have bought them. The Federal Reserve is sitting on over a trillion dollars worth of bad mortgages. That's our money. That's taxpayer money. So you know, we go that back. That was a mistake. It, we should have let those banks choke on those bad mortgages. Peter, we go you back know? because we have a minute left. We go back to the original thing that we started this with. I agree with you that we should not have done the corporate bailouts, and I agree with you that we shouldn't have those perverse incentives, the free, you know, the guaranteed mortgages, etc. Right. But you've got to agree with me that the gov government has to be the ref. That it, it, given the situation, we should be doing more regulation, not less regulation. No, we should have smarter regulations, but less regulation. The regulations that we have, no, like I'm in the financial services business industry. I am dying. I have eight employees. I'm a small firm. I have eight compliance officers. I'm getting killed with regulations, and I know none of it is protecting my customers. It's all worthless, useless, hoops, barriers that I have to jump over, and all it does is create barriers to entry. It helps the big firms that have the economies of scale get bigger and bigger by keeping our competitors out of the industry. You know, we are over-regulated. We have, yes, we do need a government regulation re referee. There are some regulations that we do need, uh, and, and I'm in favor of those, but we have far too many. And we have regulations that don't just keep a fair playing field. They actually distort it, and they cause a misallocation of resources, and they cause the financial disasters that we had in 2008 and the bigger one that's yet to come. The regulation is not what causes the disasters. The subsidies and the incentive program well, through so what uh, causes subsidies it. are regulation. It's no. government interference. When well, the government if you split up a subsidy, look, we're we're out of time. But if you, uh, I keep telling you, I don't want the government to pervert the market. But at the same time, they've got to do regulation. And I know as a businessman, it adds cost to you, and you don't like it. But there's a real value in it. And no, it's not. We're not worried about you. We're worried it, about the it, big bankers who take advantage of that. Customers. It has cost to my customers because that's who oh, has to pay Oh, come on. You, to go, pass you're going to tell me Goldman Sachs was worried. You're going to tell me that Goldman Sachs was worried about their customers? Come on. Well, they were worried about their bonuses. Yeah. Goldman Sachs might not be, but I am. Okay. <laughs> Goldman gotta, Sachs is worried about themselves, and thanks to the government, they're all rich. All right. We've got to leave it right there. Peter Schiff running for uh, Senate in Connecticut, and his website is schiffforsenate.com. Thanks for joining us, Peter. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.